Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. A lot is going on and I think you guys have all noticed that too. There's a ton of news that came out today and let's start. All right, make sure you press the like button to support the channel and Mac Attack just posted Ripple partners with new universities on three different continents. Ripple has joined forces with three more leading universities expanding its blockchain acceleration program called the University Blockchain Research Initiative. So for all of you that do not know, Ripple has been working very closely with universities to, you could kind of say like explain blockchain to just people attending university. They've just been funding their UBRI, their University Blockchain Research Initiative, which I think is really quite important specifically from Ripple's position where they are a good part in one of the biggest cryptos out there, XRP, to fund universities like that it's beautiful and I think it is really good. So the University of Cape Town University, New York University, and Abu Dhabi, I think, right? Or no, wait, actually it's the University of Cape Town, New York University, Abu Dhabi, and Reykjavik University have been added to the list. And there's quite a lot of other ones, but you can check it out for yourself. You just type in a list. It's not that important. It's just to understand that they are continuing on with the adoption and continuing on with the funding. Then a big really big exchange has actually decided to relist xrp femex an exchange that suspended xrp trading after the sec lawsuit on december 31st 2020 has now relisted xrp and there are a lot of people happy about this including me and this is really a boom but i'm a little bit tired so we're gonna stick to the yeah <laughs> we're gonna stick to the small celebration but it's a really big deal we are happy to announce that Femex is offering spot and contract trading for eight new coins. Additionally, due to popular demand, we are also bringing XRP back onto the platform. So I believe the reason they got rid of XRP on their platform was mostly because of the security issue. Then again, we have also noticed now a lot of these platforms like Femex, I don't even think offer services to the United States. They just took it off because they didn't want to be involved with law at all, right? At least that is my understanding of it. If Femex does allow for US customers, I'll take my loss there because I did not know that. Now, with that said, this is a pretty huge ordeal because it's going to have a lot more people trading it once more. And Femex is really huge in the contracts as well, just in the you know, the, the, the basically the leverage trading, let's call it like that, or the contracts trading, it's, it's a little bit different. And to have this there is just another pivotal step. I don't think that Coinbase is relisting it just quite yet, but it's getting closer and closer and closer as more companies are just now pulling over the switch and are like, well, they can't ban us all, right? They can't find us all, which they can do, they definitely can. But it's, I, I think, also a little bit of emotion because it's looking more and more like Ripple is going to be winning this lawsuit. Then again, they also delisted it for no real good reason, if you were to ask me, because they didn't really have to. Um, so that is, I guess, that on, the, on that same note. But then again, guys, I am pretty freaking excited for all of this. If you're wondering, what would it take for Coinbase to relist it? It's actually mostly on the fact that if the SEC puts up a no action letter, or if Coinbase slash any of these other exchanges goes to the SEC and they get like a, a little document saying, hey, what you're doing now is not illegal. We won't pursue this in law or you won't be able to be you know, sued or fined for this. Then it's all good. But since Coinbase right now is busy with their IPO, obviously, and since a lot of these exchanges do not get that little piece of information, they don't get any info on that. They're just like, well, better be safe than sorry, even though a lot of those exchanges, including Femex, would love to have XRP on there because it's a lot of volume and a lot of popularity. Specifically, now the relisting gets you a ton of attention. So they definitely, definitely love it. Then on the XRP slash Bitcoin forefront, things are looking really beautiful on the XRP pair. We said before we want a daily confirmation, which we got, which is looking pretty damn juicy. Even on Bitcoin, we got that daily confirmation too. So as it stands right now, we have broken out from this short-term downtrend and we are going to be continuing higher. Of course, it's not a certain thing, but the probability of continuing this is higher. Then again, guys, don't think that just because this happened, everything is just Gucci and, and you know, amazing. It doesn't really work that way. Charts move in a really difficult fashion. And I also would like to point out that there's so much manipulation. There's so many wheels. And like you most likely saw in my interview with, with Cryptos Ross George, it's, it's really hard to get a good grasp of what the short term price is going to be doing and who can really predict it properly. Because there's so many outstanding factors here that are into play, which you are not thinking about right now. For example, 
the regulations are a very big part, but it's all happening in the background, right? Because we don't really care, but the big guys might. Maybe it is that a hedge fund is coming on in and they're trying to manipulate the price. Maybe it's just a hedge fund trying to buy it. Maybe a hedge fund has blacklisted it. Maybe a couple of exchanges are actually, you know, having a glitch with the trading. Everything here on a really kind of smaller scale could have a huge impact on the price. Where with stocks, if you're talking low cap stocks, okay, yeah, you know, it can have the same effect. But in this case, here we're talking about the biggest of the biggest crypto, uh, which is a little bit different than a low cap stock because, well, you guys get it, right? These are the biggest of its industry, and those are like the smaller fish in the industry. XRP is huge, though. Think about that. Then Bank XRP posted, Ripple CEO, Brett Gollinghouse, the United States is the only country on the planet that has view XRP as a security. It's so important for the industry to have clarity. Innovation in the USA is in some way on trial. It's so important for the industry to have clarity. Innovation in the USA is in some way on trial. Okay, I was like, huh, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. It actually came after Brad Gollinghouse a little bit earlier tweeted this out. Liz Clemens said, Ripple CEO, quote, It's hard to describe a small company like Ripple as harassing the SEC, end quote. Brad Gollinghouse responded saying, 10 years later, the US still lacks a clear regulatory framework for crypto. Assets like XRP are open source plus global by nature, and hundreds of projects are building with the XRP ledger. Innovation can't be stopped. It just, it may just thrive out of the U.S. Thanks, Liz Clement, for the chat. And that's a little talk, as you guys most likely already knew right here. Gullinghouse says, the SEC has fought us at every step of the way as we try to figure out how Bitcoin is not a security. So, I've also said this in the interview, I'm going to say it again. I personally think if XRP is going down, Ethereum is going down, uh, Bitcoin might go down. I'm not too sure about that one, but Ethereum is definitely going down. And if XRP actually gets demon security as well, then some of these other currencies like Cardano and you name them, just almost, <laughs> almost all of them, to be honest, are going to be going down still. Regardless of what the verdict was before, it doesn't matter. They're all going to be going down. Even though they've been audited, whatever, they're going down. I really think so because Ripple had... One of the biggest fighting powers basically behind it and a huge community fighting for it as well. We have freaking how many 16,000 people signing the freaking documents to also intervene in the lawsuit. So if Ripple slash XRP can't win this, yeah, I don't think many others can win, guys. So that, that means the U.S. has won. But then again, the U.S. is also lost because that means the U.S. has actually dimmed innovation so much that crypto won't be able to survive there. So crypto will be available everywhere around the world except for the United States, which... <laughs> It's going to be really interesting knowing that banks like, for example, JP Morgan are also planning to adopt Bitcoin now for their clients. And it's just a simple game of supply and demand, right? There's a certain amount of supply, which for most cryptos is fixed, and there's just growing demand. So banks and all institutions will have to get into it. And the U.S. banning it or you know making it harder is only going to stab them in their own foot. Then Mac again posting, most people have no idea what is going on behind the scenes of Ripple. So many smart people are making XRP the biggest, fastest, and most useful. The only thing I wanted to say kind of here is think about everything that Ripple has kind of put on the map already. Like, if you just look at what type of conferences they've been to, the World Economic Forum connections, every bank, every huge institution, you can kind of draw links to Ripple to. And that's one thing that you shouldn't forget. Uh, Danelle Dixon, or Nixon, Danelle, D whatever, from Stellar, the CEO of Stellar, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I think she's the CEO of Stellar or chairman of Stellar, some board, maybe. I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter if she's the, the chairman somewhere or CEO. She is also on a lot of these conferences. But Ripple, once more, also, you know, there's the technology behind XRPL, so basically the same as uh, behind Stellar, it's really juicy. And I think with the way that Ripple's trying to build this in the payment realm, that a lot of the, the, the connections that they've made here will pop up at one point or another. They might not be apparent just quite yet because Ripple's not doing things on such a global scale, such a heavy scale that, you know, they they need to become apparent. But eventually, we'll see it, guys. That's kind of my point here. Eventually, in due time, we will see it, we will notice, and I think it's going to be really interesting. Then, BIS, in de uh, decline in correspondent banking, pushing people to use crypto. Keep that in mind, right? Bank of International Settlements has at some points also said, again, this type of technology is, is for the future. We all know it, though. I mean, the whole SWIFT ordeal, <sighs> it doesn't make any sense. And then Leia Heilpern says, VeChain are now powering Cyprus's CV version passport app. I don't want to say that out loud. This ought to throw a spanner in the community. 
All I wanted to say about this is, man, VeChain has a proven use case, all right? VeChain has a proven use case. We all know it. The value of that crypto might deviate a little bit every day. You know, it will go up and down logically as any crypto will. And it might go down right now. But longer term, we are crazy excited about this crypto. I just have to make sure you guys are aware of that. Long term, it's still freaking juicy. It is one of the only cryptos within this list that's really doing a lot already. You can't deny the progress that they've made. And you can't deny the future for VeChain. Just quickly wanted to let you guys know about that. So that was it for my update here. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And once more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like, why not? And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video.